Okay, guys, so I've done it. I finally finished my arcade machine. Check it out. Looks great, right? I literally could not be any happier with this thing. Uh, it's taken me just over a year to build, I think, so definitely a big project to actually take on if you consider making one of these yourself. Be warned, uh, I almost didn't finish it, but, you know, I'm glad I finally finished making this thing, and now I can actually play some retro games on this thing. So, if you want to build one of these machines yourself, it's not even on. So, if you want to build one of these machines yourself, stick around, because through this video I'm going to show you exactly what went into making this. From the woodwork, the electronics, everything. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. For the majority of this project, I decided to use 18mm MDF. This stuff was reclaimed, as you can see by the huge hole in the middle of it, so I decided to make that area the waste area. The pieces I actually need are the outside pieces, and they're going to make up the outside of the cabinet. I found the best way to cut angles like this is to go most of the way with an electric saw, like the circular saw, and then finish it off with a hand saw, like I'm doing here. And now I'm creating some braces for the back of the arcade machine. These braces are basically just going to keep the two sides separate from one another. Um, two of them are also going to make French cleats, which I'll show in a moment. So that's one of the French cleats there. You can see I've basically just cut that brace down the middle at a 45 degree angle, and that's going to create a hook, and there'll be an opposing hook that I can attach to either a wall or to a base that I actually end up building a bit later in the video. So you can see that's the French cleat on the left, and there's a French cleat in the middle. And the very bottom piece of the arcade machine is just a regular brace. I used plenty of glue and brad nails throughout, just to make sure that everything was completely solid. I also used some spacers, just to make sure that very middle piece was completely parallel. Here I'm creating, I guess you could call them tabs, I don't know if there's a proper word for these, um, but these are basically just going to be used to hold the rest of the panels in place. It gives me something to actually mount to. You see I can tack them in with the brad nails and I can do the exact same when I come to put a panel on those areas. Here you can actually see me using one of those tabs. It just gives me a place for that panel to rest on while the glue dries and it doesn't put too much strain on the nails that way. And there I am, just admiring my own work for a second. So I started sanding with just a regular hand sanding block and quickly decided that was a terrible idea. And so I did a little bit of wood filling off camera and then broke out the orbital sander. This made the job a lot quicker, but still could have been quicker if I'd have used the belt sander, which I ended up using to make the base of this arcade machine a little bit later on. So here I'm basically just rubbing the arcade machine down with some white spirit. That's doing two things, it's removing any dirt that might have built up, and it's also removing any grease that I could have transferred from my hands to the MDF. I actually lost the footage of me starting painting, I'm sure you get the idea though. It's just regular black paint, this stuff's quite hard wearing, and overall I think I did about three coats, and between each coat I did plenty of sanding and filling just to make sure I had a level surface. I then decided I wanted to wrap the arcade machine. This isn't something I'd tried before, and it was quite a big thing to wrap, but I think overall it turned out pretty well. The side panels were pretty easy, to be honest. The top was very easy, it was a very small piece of vinyl. The only part I really had an issue with was the main front panel. I think mainly just because of the sheer size of that piece of vinyl, it just became an absolute nightmare to work with. Overall though, I think it paid off, and it looks pretty great in my opinion. So now I'm basically building a base for this thing. As you can see in the top right, I've actually started this off camera already. So I'm basically creating just like the front, back and top panel for it now, I think. You can see I'm using a very similar technique with the tabs that I mentioned earlier, uh, just to give these panels something to hold on to. In this case, I opted to use a clamp as well, rather than using my hand, because I didn't feel comfortable putting my hand that close to the brad nails. 
You can see I'm leaving quite a lot of overhang on this piece of MDF. Um, reason being, I couldn't find anything to actually measure that angle with. Uh, so instead, I did what you saw there and actually cut it whilst it was attached to the base. I really don't recommend this as, I mean, it caused me some problems a bit later. The cut wasn't quite as straight as I liked. Um, I should have really just done it properly in the first place. You can see I'm actually doing the exact same thing here, leaving a huge amount of excess and then cutting it off. I mean, it worked, but honestly, I should have just uh, took the time and got the right tools for the job. For now, I'm adding plenty of filler to this thing. Um, this wasn't the greatest piece of MDF to work with, so yeah, filling it. And we're doing quite a heavy sanding job on this one. And now painting it. I think I only chose to do about two coats on this piece, uh, just because at this point I knew I was going to be wrapping it in vinyl, whereas the first piece I didn't. So here I am, just using some warm soapy water just to wet the sides and then attach the vinyl. That basically just stops the vinyl from gripping for a minute or two. That way I can move it around and remove any bubbles. And that right there is exactly why you don't buy cheap vinyl from eBay. Luckily I was able to push the two sides of this tear together, so you can only just notice it if you get close to it. Not ideal, but it's only on the base, so I'm not too bothered about it. So for the top of the base, I decided to attach some felt to it instead of wrapping it. Reason being is I didn't want the base to dig into the bottom of the arcade machine when it was resting on it. Um, I think the felt's done a pretty good job of stopping that so far. It's also caused it to be a little bit more grippy. Um, I think that's helped with the French cleat situation and holding the arcade in place. So, moving on to the electronics, I started out by cutting out a template for the button placements. I mocked this thing up on Adobe Illustrator, just from a few designs that I found online and what felt right to me. After cutting and sticking the sheets together, I mounted them to the arcade machine and then started drilling the holes for the buttons. You'll notice this hole cutting bit is actually for metal. Um, really not ideal for cutting MDF, you'll see there's a lot of smoke and friction created by this. The template also got pretty messed up, but, you know, it's only a one-time use type of thing. So these buttons are pretty straightforward to use. The switch and the LED are mounted together, so that can just be twisted out. And then we've got like a spring-loaded button for the top of it. That gets pushed through the MDF and a nut gets tightened up behind it. That gives us pretty much a perfect finish on the front. Although, I'd probably point out you'd want to wrap this after drilling the holes, unlike I did. Uh, you can see there's a few bubbles being caused by drilling it after wrapping. The switch and LED assembly is then put back in from underneath, um, making sure none of the terminals are like pointing directly towards each other. That way the wire that we use to connect them up a little bit later is going to have plenty of room. You can see I'm also putting the joysticks in place now. I'm marking those with a pencil and then just screwing them in from the bottom. The hole for these joysticks was, uh, I think, the same size as the hole for the switches, by the way. And you can see there's a little plastic ring that covers up that hole, and then the ball can be screwed back on top. So here I'm creating some daisy chains for the buttons. Each of the buttons had an LED in it, which was 5 volts, and that needed a daisy chain for each terminal, so positive and negative. And then the other daisy chain that I made was for the switches, connecting all the grounds of the switches together. The positives of all the switches were then connected to the IPAC2 controller board, that you'll see a little bit later on. Just in case that made absolutely no sense to you, I'm going to try and explain it a little bit better now you can see. I'm currently connecting daisy chains to all of the LEDs. There's a red daisy chain for positive and a blue daisy chain for ground. The other end of these daisy chains is then going to be connected to a USB, which can be plugged into the Raspberry Pi for power. I also made a third daisy chain, which you would actually see me install. That one was yellow and it was used to connect all the grounds of the switches together. And this is the IPAC2 that I told you about earlier. This basically takes all our inputs from the different switches and maps them to a USB so that the Raspberry Pi can understand them. Now the final connection to make for each switch is to the IPAC2. I basically just uh, take one wire, connect it to a switch and put it in the corresponding place on the IPAC2 and rinse and repeat for all of the switches. So there's eight switches that you actually interact with and then you've got like coin start and then the joystick direction, so up, down, left and right. The joysticks were a bit of a pain actually. Um, they had those white cables that you can see just dangling there. I had to basically continuity test those and just make sure I connected the right switch into the right terminal. 
So what I'm doing right now was a huge mistake. You can see this piece of MDF is incredibly water damaged in that top area. There's also on the far left of the piece I'm cutting out, there is quite a lot of warping. I chose to use the piece anyway. Looking back, I wish I'd have just gone out and bought a new piece of MDF. But at this point, I really just wanted to push on and get the project finished. Also this time with painting, I decided to use a roller just because it got the paint on a lot quicker. It provided quite a nice finish as well. Not, not the nicest to look at, but for a back panel like this, I think it's perfect. So right now I'm just transferring the measurements of where those braces are on the base piece to like the actual back panel. Um, that's gonna allow me to pre-drill some holes and then drive screws in from underneath. That way I know the base is on in the right position. And now with it upright, I finally get a bit of a sense of scale and how big the arcade's gonna be. So at this point you can see I'm actually narrating to the camera. After looking back at the footage though, I realized what I was saying made absolutely no sense. So here goes. The French cleats basically form hooks. The French cleats on the back are gonna be pointing upwards and the French cleats on the arcade itself are gonna be pointing downwards. This basically means that we can lift the arcade machine up and hook it over these hooks and it should hold itself in place on the back panel. You can see I actually already have the lines for where the French cleats are as I'd already put the arcade machine on and measured this prior to recording this. Now I'm just pre-drilling some holes and then attaching the French cleats in place. Just a heads up, what you guys are about to see is a temporary mounting panel that I used just to put an old screen on this thing whilst waiting for a bigger screen to become available. Okay, I've been looking at this for like a year now and I've decided it looks terrible. This looks bad because I mean the monitor's like inches away from the actual thing. Uh, those speakers are way too big, so probably gonna lose those too. Decided I'm not gonna recut this panel because it fits okay. Instead, I'm gonna reuse this panel so that Currently, that's how it was before. What I'm gonna do, flip it upside down. The monitor is gonna go here. Then the speakers at the bottom. I'm gonna ditch that and these holes, we're just gonna make them. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, take these things out uh, first and then we'll take the speakers off. For that, I'll need a screwdriver. So for anyone wondering what the whole like one year later thing was about, I've been trying to find a monitor that would actually fit in this arcade machine for literally a year. The main issue is there aren't that many 28 inch monitors available. There aren't that many that are like the aspect ratio that would look right on this. And I suppose like the biggest problem is I didn't actually build this machine to the size of a monitor. I just built the machine and then hoped I could find a monitor that would fit in it. So if there's any advice I can give to any of you is don't do that. Get a monitor first and then measure it and then build an arcade around that instead of doing the exact opposite like I did. Another piece of advice I can give you is do not follow this tutorial as a how to apply vinyl tutorial. This is not how you apply vinyl. I made an absolute mess of this. I don't know what I was doing with that hairdryer. I think the main issue is I wasn't using any soapy water this time. I somehow managed to get this to look acceptable in the end by popping some of the bubbles and like going over it with a hairdryer for literally hours. If I was to give you any advice, it would be don't wrap this panel. Just get a piece of black acrylic cut to size with a screen and like outline in it and just use that as like a mask behind the acrylic. That would work so much better. All said and done though, I think I did a pretty damn good job, considering what that was looking like just a moment ago. Okay, this is literally the most complicated part of the entire process. Um, first off, you need a copy of RetroPie. You'll need Blina Etcher, or another disk imaging software. First off, what we're gonna do is select the image. Um, I'm literally just gonna drag that straight into there. Then need to select the target. In this case, I'm gonna be using this mass storage device. This is a micro SD. Click continue and click flash. Um, we get a thing pop up on the screen that says, are you sure you want to do this? We click yes. And now it's all starting. We're gonna leave this a little while now. Uh, 
it should just finish like so. Successful. Um, what you might find, it can sometimes fail if the disk, like the uh, the SD card you're using isn't quite big enough, so try using a larger SD card if you need to. Um, I've gone with a 32 gig, that's definitely overkill, I think you'd probably get away with 8 gigabytes. More or less on the home straight now, I uh, just want to show you a little bit of the basic electronics of this. So we have the Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi has the micro SD card in that we flashed earlier. We're going to plug the HDMI from the monitor into here. We're also going to plug in our USB stick full of games into one of the USB ports. We've also got a USB dongle. I'm going to just leave this in here permanently, I think, uh, just to avoid any issues in the future. I can always whip the keyboard out that way and troubleshoot any issues. Then the last thing that we need here is the power in. Uh, that's just micro USB in the bottom here. And the other end of this, I still haven't plugged in. We'll put that into a power brick like so. It's going to go into an extension cable that I have down here. You'll see any second now, if my extension cable is powered on, you'll see any second now, an LED will turn on on the Raspberry Pi. I've red for power and then green, I think, probably means it's booting. Should see loads of stuff flash about on the screen and RetroPi boots up. Okay, I'm going to leave that to do its thing for a while. Um, the drive finished formatting or doing whatever it needed to do. Took it inside, I put a few ROMs on it. I'm gonna try just using the keyboard for the time being before we actually put it in the machine, uh, just cause that's kind of like a final step. Um, so I just wanna test it's actually working with this first, make sure we can play the games we've got on it, and then put everything together. It's launching something. Press A button to configure. Oh, okay. What did I set to the down button? I can't remember. Okay, so more or less finished now. Um, last thing I've got to do is just put some holes in the vinyl there and attach this thing in there permanently. Moment of truth. Oh, why it's flash? Oh, LED's on. Yes. Let's play. Oh, which one's gonna be the least likely to get copyright struck? Shrag Galaxy and some money. I guess that means we're finished. Arcade machine done. This is probably one of the biggest projects I've ever taken on. Um, if you guys enjoyed watching it, uh, if you want to see any more, Maybe leave a like, consider subscribing. You can see all my other great videos, like the one where I made this awesome X-ray mood light. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching this today. Um, if you have, like I say, consider subscribing. That would really mean a lot. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Outro over. Peace.